small vessels. He uses broken vessels. The only thing God will not use is a dirty vessel. And so the starting point, if you want God's blessing in your life, and if you want to be used for the purpose you were created, you got to purify your heart. And how do I do that? I confess to God the sin in my life. I don't let it pile up. If I let garbage pile up in the kitchen for a day or two, it's not that big a deal. I let it pile up for a week, it starts stinking. If I let it pile up for longer than a week, the whole house starts reeking and it starts attracting all kinds of vermin who want to get into that rotting, dirty uh, garbage. Now, the rest of your life, you're going to keep sinning. You're not going to live a perfect life. You're going to sin. So what do you need to do? You need to keep short accounts of God. You don't go days without confessing it. You don't do a week. You don't let it pile up for months. Because when you do, it just starts stinking. And the key to, to being used of God is not to be perfect, but to keep short accounts with God. And to, as quickly as it comes to your mind, you go, you're right, God, that was wrong. I'm sorry. I ask for your forgiveness. And so what you do is you do, and I do this on a regular basis, I do a personal inventory of my life. I sit down and I do a little soul searching. And I say, okay, God, what's between me and you? Is there something that I've hurt other people that I feel guilty about? Is there ways that other people have hurt me and I'm holding on to a grudge and resentment? What am I worried about? What am I afraid of? What am I insecure about? Where am I... Uh, where am I being dishonest? I'm looking at all these different areas of my life. I hold a personal inventory. And you need to do this. You need to purify your heart so God can use you. 2 Timothy 2.21 says this. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a utensil that God can use for his purpose. Your life will be clean not perfect, clean. Your life will be clean and you will be ready. That's what we're talking about, getting ready to be used by God. You will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. So here's my question for you. What's piled up in your life that you need to get rid of? What do you need to do business with, with God? What you need to do this week, if you're serious about God's blessing in your life is you need to get off by yourself for an hour or so and be quiet and alone with God and you sit down and you say, okay, God, what's between me and you? And whatever he brings to mind, you write it down, you confess it, you tear up the paper, you can burn it if you want to. I've done that sometimes. You throw it in the trash, whatever, put it through your shredder. But the thing is you get it off your chest, you admit it and you get forgiven and you get cleansed. Nothing is going to happen in your life until you do that. You purify your heart. And you say, God, what do you need to do in my life? Now, once you've purified your heart, you move to the second thing, and that's your body. And number two, in order to be ready to be used by God, I must purify my heart and I must sanctify my body. Now, let me explain what that means. Sanctify my body. The word sanctify is just a fancy word that means to dedicate for a purpose. That's all it means. Sanctify means to dedicate something for a special purpose. When we did the series on the tabernacle and Kay taught us that there were certain utensils in the tabernacle that were dedicated for specific purposes and they were only used for that, those items were sanctified. You can sanctify anything. You can sanctify your marriage. God, we dedicate this marriage to you. You can sanctify your job. God, I dedicate my job to you. You can sanctify your car. God, I give you my car. It is to be used by you any way you want to for, for good. You can sanctify your house. God, I give you my house. I dedicate this house to you. So it can be a person. It can be a relationship. It can be an item. It can be a utensil. Anytime you dedicate something for God's purpose, that becomes sanctified. That's all it means, dedicated for the master's use. Now the Bible says that after I purify my heart, now God says I want you to sanctify your body. That means dedicate my physical body to God's purpose for the life I was meant to live. Let me show you some verses. Romans six thirteen. Do not let any part of your body become a tool of wickedness to be used for sinning. Instead, give yourselves completely to God since you've been given new life. And 
Use your whole body. Circle that. Your whole body. Use your whole body as a tool. That means eyes, ear, nose, mouth. Every part of my body as a whole body as a tool to do what is right for the glory of God. Now why this emphasis on the physical? I mean, I understand God saying, I want your heart to be clean, I can get that. But why does he say I want your body, your physical body to be dedicated to me? I'll tell you why. Because you can't do anything on this earth without your body. Anywhere you're gonna serve God, your body goes with you. I don't know if you've noticed this or not. But you cannot be where your body isn't. Sometimes people say, oh, I can't be with you tonight, but I'll be with you there in spirit. You know what that means? Nothing. It means nothing. You can't be in spirit with somebody. You can only be where your body is. And as long as you are alive on this planet Earth, you will only be where your body is. That's why Jesus said it's good for me to go away because I'm gonna send the Holy Spirit back. Why? Because when Jesus was here in the flesh, he could only be in one place at one time. Now he could put his spirit in all of us and be all around the world at once. So he's saying, I want you to dedicate your body to me because you take your body everywhere you go to serve God. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 says this. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people today just truncate that verse and say, don't you know your body is a temple? No, it's not a temple. It is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Some people want to make their body a temple themselves, to themselves. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God. You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. Jesus paid for your body on the cross. So you must honor God with your body. Question, are you honoring God with your body? I'm not talking about your heart. I'm talking about your physical body. Are you honoring God with your body? Say, how do I do that? By taking care of it. You need to take care of it because it is a stewardship. It is a management. You see, God created your body. Jesus died for your body. The Holy Spirit lives in your body, so God expects you to take care of your body. Now, you know my story on this. I never picked this up for a long time. You know, I, all my life, I was born with an enormous amount of energy, so I never paid attention to my health. I've never paid attention to it all my life. I just, God just blessed me with good health and I had lots of energy, and uh, I honestly didn't care how I looked, so I became a purpose-driven eater, <laughs> all right? And, um, and most of you know the story that uh, about a year ago, I was baptizing on a Saturday. Now we baptize after every service here at Saddleback, but I baptize usually about once a month. And uh, on that particular Saturday, I baptized after a one-on-one class, 869 people. It took me about four hours. And out here at the baptism pool, there people were standing in line, nearly 900 people. Now, at 150 pounds a person, and I'm putting them underground, that's about 50,000 pounds of weight I'm lifting over that, that period of hour. Along about number 500 in this baptism, I had a thought. <laughs> it wasn't a very spiritual thought. <laughs> Pastors probably shouldn't have these thoughts. But as I was baptizing about number 500, I thought, good night, we're all fat. <laughs> I told you what the spiritual thought. It was just like, everybody's overweight, okay? This is not your saddleback, father's saddleback. We were all these little skinny dudes, young skinny dudes. We've all put on the poundage. And I thought, but I'm fat. I'm a terrible example of this because I, I didn't really care what I looked like and I had great energy and so I just didn't pay much attention to it. I thought, I can't expect everybody to get in shape if I'm out of shape. So I decided that week to do a little research. So I went out and I discovered two things. One, that for the first time in history, there are as many people dying of overweight as there are dying from malnutrition. There are one billion now on the earth in each category. One billion malnourished people in the world who don't have enough to eat, and one billion people who have heart disease and diabetes and all of the chronic illnesses from too much to eat. First time in history. 
And then I was reading an article about the Obamacare plan and it said of the $5 trillion spent on health every year in America, $5 trillion, $4.5 trillion of the money we spend on doctors and stuff is from preventable chronic lifestyle diseases, which means they're the problems that we cause ourselves from not enough sleep, not enough exercise, too much to eat, and too much stress. You know, it's problems like diabetes and heart disease and blood pressure and a lot of other chronic problems that are all caused by ourselves. You don't get them out of the air, you get them from lifestyle. So many of you remember that Sunday, about a year ago, I stood up and said, folks, now I need to repent. And I said, I, 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 I've only gained two to three pounds a year as your pastor, but I've been your pastor 30 years. So I said, I need to lose 90 pounds. And we started the Daniel plan. Now, I'm not there yet. I've had ups and downs. I've lost over 50. I'm still on the way, but I made a long-term lifetime commitment to this. It wasn't a diet. It wasn't a three-month or even a one-year plan. And I still work out once or twice a day. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's a long-term commitment. And, 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 in our church, over 12,000 people signed up on the Daniel plan. In the first year, we lost over 250,000 pounds in this church, which is an amazing thing. Yeah, it's an amazing thing. In fact, it's been on CNN and ABC. And, uh, you know, in fact, we got a Time magazine called this week and wants to do a cover story. So you really got to get in shape, man. Okay. I'm not going to let you get on the cover if you're not looking good. So, all right. And, uh, you know, as, I, as we begin to do the Daniel plan, I learned that the Bible has a lot more to say about your body than I realized. Let me just show you a few verses. The Bible talks about a balance of eating and sleeping and exercise and rest. Here are a few verses here on the screen. Psalm 127, 2. It is senseless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, for God wants his loved ones to get their proper rest. Sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is go take a nap. Don't do it now, but, <laughs> but taking a nap. And long before scientists uncovered the damage of excess sweets, the Bible said this in Proverbs 25, eating too much honey is not good. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.18, do not get drunk. Do not get drunk on wine, which will ruin you which leads to debauchery. 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, you must do it all for the glory of God. The Bible even has some to say about exercise and, and discipline. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Now, we all know we need exercises to keep our brains working efficiently. By the way, I want to recommend sleepwalking because you combine rest and exercise together. And this would be great multitasking for those of you who have a, a tough time finding time for one of the other. Just sleepwalking. You can do them both at the same time. Psalm 119.73 says this, You made my body, Lord. Now give me sense to heed your laws. And you say, well, Rick, is this really that important? It is that important. Did you know that one third of Jesus' ministry dealt with health care? The Bible says in Matthew 4, Jesus went into every village preaching, teaching, and healing. One third of his ministry was helping people get healthy. One third of his ministry. Because Jesus doesn't just care about you getting into heaven. He cares about your soul, but he also cares about your mind, education, and your body, health. So the Bible says we are to purify our hearts, let's get the sin out of our lives so God can use us, and we are to sanctify our bodies. I don't know how you feel about your body, but really you've only got three or four options. You can, uh, you can reject it, neglect it, perfect it, or protect it. You, you, can, you can reject it, which a lot of people do. I don't like my body, and give me another model, and they're always trying to fix it, and, and uh, you, know, you treat it like it's a mistake. That's not right. Uh, you can neglect it, which is what most of us do. We just don't pay attention to our bodies. 
Uh, you can go the other extreme and perfect it. You become narcissistic and you're just all about glorifying your body and how great you look and everything is all about how you look and it's all about appearance and it becomes an idol. But don't neglect and don't reject and don't perfect. The Bible says protect. Protect it because God created it and Jesus paid for it and the Holy Spirit lives in it. Now, maybe you were a part of Daniel Plan and you've kind of fallen away or maybe you weren't even here when we started, it'd be a good time to get started on this. And I want you to be healthier a year from today than now. So you'll have more energy. Right now, if God told some of you to do something, you couldn't do it because you don't have the energy to do it. You, don't, you flat out don't have the energy to do it. And so you need to not just purify your heart, you need to sanctify